This is an offset smoker. You want to know what running an offset smoker really looks like? No theatrics, no BS. If you want to see the stuff most YouTubers won't show you, keep watching. You're about to see a real cook, everything, start to finish, with nothing edited out. I set up a camera to record non-stop for six and a half hours so you can see every second of the process. I've sped up most of the video to shrink it down to under an hour, but it plays a normal speed every time I add wood or make an adjustment. In the end, you're gonna see the four different meats that I cooked, and I'm gonna give you some important tips that'll take the pressure off your next cook. Here's what you're getting. I mounted a clock to the front of this offset smoker, so you're gonna see exactly how much time passes between touches. I also placed three ambient temperature probes inside the cook chamber, so you're gonna be able to see exactly what the temperature does, and in the end, what effect it has on the cook. We're almost ready to get going, but real quick, if you find this video helpful, interesting, if you have requests, suggestions, questions, anything, please put that in the comments section because my videos are a direct result of your feedback and I will get back to you. And don't forget, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button and sharing with your friends also helps my channel out a ton. Finally, and most importantly, I want to say a huge thank you to all of you who have subscribed and supported my channel in the past and welcome to Tony Tone Barbecue. Let's get cooking. All right, here's what we're working with today in supplies. This is the Char Griller Grand Champ XD Offset Smoker. I've got some high temperature gloves here. I've got a bin full of oak wood. This is what I'm primarily going to be cooking with. I've got me a couple little burners here to get the fire started. Brush, tongs that I use for moving the, uh, the wood around. Uh, this is the uh, charcoal basket. I'm not gonna be using that. This is a charcoal starter, chimney starter. Uh, I've got a bag of lump coal over here. I've got it, myself a little Weber, mini Weber kettle. You'll see what I use that for here in a minute. You probably have in some of my other videos, and this is the firebox. So uh, these are most of the things I'm going to be needing. Uh, I'm going to also throw in uh, some temperature probes, so, uh, at least a couple, so that way you can see what the temperature is going to be. Uh, or what the temperature does while it's cooking. Make sure to put that in there. And uh, well, shoot, let's go to work. I wanted to make sure you have a really good view of exactly where those probes are. And you can see one of them is pretty much smack dab right in the middle, right here, just a couple inches away from the very back wall. The other one on the left is about five, six inches from the left side. There's the exhaust hole, it's about six inches from the left side. And on the right, close to the firebox, is about five inches from the firebox and kind of directly, really close, pretty much even with where the, if you can barely see it down there, where that deflector ends, which is about right there. So the heat is coming from underneath there and coming up sharply right here in that area. All right, this is it. Camera's rolling and uh, it's time to go to work. It's just after 11 o'clock and um, uh, here we go. <laughs> Tumbleweeds, fire starters. All right, that's a lump coal. I'm using the lump coal just to get the, uh, to build a coal bed. That's going to go in the firebox, going to put some oak on top of that, and we're going to bring the temperature up. Okay, it's 11.15 and uh, lump coal is hot enough. Firebox lid down. Side intake vent is wide open. cooking chamber lid down. I'm gonna let the sucker start to heat up.
All right, 11.30. We got a gauge over here saying it's 250, gauge over here saying 200, gauge up top saying about 225. It's just coming up in temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and add in a chunk of oak wood to get that going in there too. Okay, I'm done messing with freaking probes here. All right, so I've got the probes positioned so that you're gonna see, hopefully, you'll see a temperature reading from this area over here, right in the middle, and then the far side over here. All right, it's noon. Let's uh, see what we got in the box here. Yeah. It's about time. Get there. Let's get some meat in this bad boy. Okay, it's noon. Hopefully you'll be able to see the temperatures here as we progress, but uh, I might just do some kind of chart at the end of the video or something like that to see uh, where we are as far as like starting time and and uh, how often I'm putting in more wood. Um, anyway, so let's, we're gonna let this roll here. Hopefully there's no problems with the GoPro camera system here. I'm probably gonna go throw a fan over here just to blow some air at it and make sure it doesn't overheat because I know they do that. Um, but hopefully we'll we'll get every minute but uh, I'll try to keep an eye on the camera. Man monitoring the camera is probably going to be more difficult than monitoring the fire. So I'm going to hang here for just a few minutes and monitor the, um, you know, just kind of keep an eye on the fire. It, it's still got a pretty good pile of, um, of a coal bed in there, so it's putting out a lot of heat. I'm probably going to try to just kind of keep that in control for a little bit so temperatures don't climb too high because you can see like the gauge, just, the probe that's way over here is reading 320. 
and the other one on the far side there is 221. So, you know, we're in the middle there somewhere. The meat is closer to that middle one. I left this area over here uh, kind of empty. But um, I just wanted you to see the, the differences there. Um, anyways, once I get this thing settled, then I'm just going to go and do other stuff. All right, so quick thing here. I just closed off the uh, exhaust vent there about halfway. This thing has a big, fat, wide exhaust stack, so on this one you can close that off a little bit without creating that nasty uh, white smoke that really makes the food taste too bad by not letting the wood burn properly. It needs to be fully combusting. A um, little bit of light smoke is good. Bluish smoke is good. If you can't see it, that's good. Uh, when it's really thick and white, that's, that's usually not a good thing. Um, of course, if that happens a little bit every now and then, it's also not a big deal. Uh, so by doing, by closing off a little bit, I'm just kind of slowing the air a little bit because it's really blowing in there with that thing wide open because it's actually creating a draw. This hot section over here is pulling cold air in through over there to get to, to burn that wood and it's making that wood just flare up. So if I just close that off a little bit, it slows it down a little bit so it's not blowing at it really hard like there's a fan on it and that helps settle the temperature. So we'll see. All right, I'm, I'm going to mess with this a little bit here and then I'm just going to let it go. This, these two are looking good. Okay, 12.30, GoPro still rolling, I see. We're good there. Um, temperature is down to 209 degrees, 209 degrees on those two probes over here. The one probe that's really close to the firebox over here that's been reading really high, like around 300 the whole time, it's at 253 right now. That one is so close to this wall right here where there's this metal is super hot, so I would really disregard that one. But it also serves the purpose of telling me when the fire over here is starting to get kind of cool and I know that everything over here is going to start getting start falling pretty drastically so um, it's time to add some more wood I'm not touching this lid may not have mentioned it before, but I'm looking to run a temperature range of around 225 to 250. Um, yeah. GoPro still rolling, awesome. One o'clock, been about a half hour. 
and that's more wood. We're at 208, 208 both of those probes over there. Down pretty good. Break that up. And let's grab this cup. This looks like about a half hour. What's going on? Oh, not really. It's just uh, this one's not burning as well. We'll have this little piece over here. What had happened was that I saw the temperature had fallen down to around 210 and um, check that out. There's still a, a good amount of wood to burn there, but that particular piece is not burning all that well for some reason, so that happens. Um, I just stuck another smaller piece alongside of it and moved it around to kind of open it up again, get that fire going, and uh, we'll see what happens. Still recording, all right. Fire's dying. Uh, that one piece is still just a little smoldering there. Break that up a little bit. There we go. Let's grab. Let's try this one.
Still recording. 215. 208 on the temperature. A decent little chunk of wood there still needs to burn down. Rub it up a little bit. There we go. Move that one over. I'm going to take a peek. Oh yeah. Alright, you want a quick peek at uh, how things look after about 2 hours and 20 minutes worth of cooking? Let's check it out. It's not sort of thing I normally do, but uh, I'm going to do this for you because you're special. There we go. Oh. Uh-huh. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. All right, that's enough. Put this thing back in place. I'm going to... I'm gonna mess with this uh, lamb shank over here to wrap it up. Oh yeah. Still recording 250, time to toss some wood.
Looks like we're still rolling. 320, we're down to like 200 degrees. happened there. I got distracted. I was inside busy doing other things and uh, ended up on a phone call, couldn't get away from the call, let the temperature down, drop down to below 200 degrees. That one little chunk of wood there was just smoldering so I didn't want to fire back up right away. No big deal. All I did, got a little boost from my little friend here, got the fire burning again, we're good to go. No big deal. Okay, it's four o'clock, GoPro is still rolling, so that's good. Um, I'm tempted to take a peek here, but first I'm gonna get the fire rocking again here because we're down to uh, 210. Okay, so notice for this cook, I'm not using any probes in the meat or anything like that. I'm just kind of going with fuel on this. So I'm going to have a look at these ribs because they're the ones that uh, could take anywhere from four to six hours. Um, or And the beef ribs and the pork ribs. So I'm going to have a peek. Quiet. Oh, yeah. I am like 
liking what I'm seeing here. Ah, oh, it smells good. getting close to a point where I'm going to want to pull this meat. Regardless, I'm going to let this thing run till 6 o'clock and um, let's keep working that fire so you can see what's all involved. But uh, it's all good. Still recording. Wow. Okay. Fire's dying down. 206, 207, Forgot to mention the temperature today 89 degrees right now and breezy this the the wind that's blowing the smoke around over here is not from my fan that fan is pointing a different direction right at the gopro that's just from the the wind in the air Tempting, tempting. I'm gonna let it go for just a, another half hour. GoPro's still rolling, okay. Man, it's been a really busy day. Phone's been ringing off the hook, things been nuts. Um, I'm about ready to pull this meat off the smoker and let it rest for a little bit.
Shane. Chuck Roast. St. Louis style pork spare ribs. I mean, oh yeah, that's, that's looking good. <laughs> Beef short ribs. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'm okay with this. Oh. I suppose I'm going to need to tend this fire a little bit if I'm going to let it run till 6 o'clock. Might as well. In the meantime, I'm gonna let that meat rest over there and probably carve into it here in a little bit. Okay, well, it's been about four, well, five and a half hours, and um, you, you get the idea. <laughs> uh, I've been very busy today, a lot of work going on, a lot of phone calls, a lot of other stuff to do, so uh, there's no way I could have just hung out here and tended this fire for the entire time. Um, I did have to come out and have wood about every half hour. Um, that's pretty typical. And besides that, then I just did the thing, and you know, I. I think it's worth it for me personally because it's a very, very satisfying feeling to cook using real wood. It's also incredible flavor that you get. And if you want to see what it is that I cooked, um, I'll move the camera over here now. If we're good, we'll shut this down. Um, a little shy of six hours, sorry. I think you get the point. And uh, I'll let you have a look. Okay, the stuff I cooked today, I kind of cooked for fun. I was experimenting a little bit. And uh, one of the things I was experimenting with was this chuck roast. And the other thing was this, um, this lamb shank. So uh, let's go ahead and get this chuck roast opened up. I'm about to get a little messy, so uh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Let's put that there. All right, chuck roast. Ooh, okay. Um, this is uh, actually looking like some of the best results I've had with chuck roast. I, um, what it was about two, two and a half hours of cooking uh, unwrapped with smoked and then another couple hours, uh, about two and a half hours of uh, cooking unwrapped. It's falling apart nicely. I kind of wanted to pull a little bit, kind of like pulled pork does. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. I've had a lot of people ask me to make a video on cooking chuck roast like brisket. And um, ha, <laughs> this has been uh, very successful. This is delicious. My goodness. Seasoned with, I rubbed it with salt, pepper, and garlic. Mmm. Wow. That is really good. That's for kicks. That's for kicks here. Let's see how. How it slices. Uh huh. Hmm. It's nice. You know, this doesn't have like that um, marbled in fat like the like a um, brisket has, but it's uh, so it's not going to be as super like flimsy tender. But it came out really good. Mmm. The flavor is incredible. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Let's check out this. Mm. This is lamb shank. With the paper towel gun that I brought. There we go. Okay. <laughs> this feels the same way as that uh, as that chuck roast feels. It feels very, very soft. Um. Oh yeah, look at that. That's nice. Pulling it, it's doing what I was hoping it would do, just kind of fall apart a little bit. I'm not cutting it, I'm just kind of pulling it apart with a knife. All right, let's see how smoked lamb tastes. There it is. Oh my god, mmm, mmm, I'm gonna get you a close up there. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, I'm getting fat tonight. Wow. Mm. Oh, that is good. Mm. Okay, man, I got to get one more. One more bite. That is amazing. Mmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Um, where do we start here? Let's go ahead and cut right in the middle of these um, St. Louis style pork ribs. They just really came out looking fantastic. I'll just let you have a close up there. Mm -hmm. This looks really great. No sauce or anything. Um, personally, I kind of like to keep things uh, kind of neutral, you know, just let the flavor of the meat shine through. I got nothing against saucing either. Um, got a nice swim of bone. There we go. Come here. <sighs> I was hitting the side of a bone there. Um, look at that. It's okay. So this was seasoned with salt, pepper, and garlic also. And um, close up there. This looks fantastic. Smells like heaven. Let's go ahead and get a bite. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. Tell you what, if you're gonna put sauce on these, it better be some damn good sauce. Mmm. Mm hmm. Mmm. Oh, that is so good. Mmm. Excuse me. Mm. Mm hmm. Ah, oh, those are incredible. Okay. Oh. Mm. That was some of the more perfect ribs I've ever made. Those are freaking amazing. All right. Beef short ribs. I'm really getting messy now, sorry. But just, um, we've got some nice pull there. The meat has kind of shrunk up there from the, uh, from the ribs. Let's just go ahead and separate these. Oh my goodness. Look at just the juice. Ah, got to turn the thing off. There we go. Okay. The juice is just pouring out of these things. My goodness. Mm. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh. I, you know, <laughs> do I even take a bite out of that thing? Wow. I'll take a bite out of the smaller one. This is. Uh, <laughs> mm. 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 <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm. Wow. Wow. That, <laughs> that, mm. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. One major point I want to make. Mm. Besides the fact that the flavor of all this is incredible. And all I used on all of this was peppercorns that I gr freshly ground and uh, salt and, and garlic powder. And uh, about equal portions of each. Um, there's a video that I posted recently on Tri-Tip that actually where I actually show you exactly how I make this rub and this combination. It's freaking fantastic on most meats. Um, there was a little something different on the lamb shank. I'll have to do a video on that one because it was a little butter and some um, herbs that I mixed together. And I'll show you what I did there. The flavor on that is amazing. Lamb tastes so much different from beef and pork. But the main, the main thing here is that if you noticed, um, 
the temperature was anywhere down as low as 210 degrees, 200 degrees, all the way up as, uh, as high as 280 degrees. For the most part, it was kind of somewhere in the middle. On average, it was probably an average of 235, 240, who knows. Did you see me stressing about it? No. Uh, I just let it roll. I let it do its thing. All of this meat came out amazing. It, it's tender. It's juicy. I mean, look, it's pouring out everywhere. Um, it, <laughs> it is incredible. And I did not stress over keeping the temperature set at 225 degrees for this entire time. I wasn't over here adjusting anything, trying to trying to really keep it down in that range and stressing over it. Um, I just let it roll. And I never it never got so high that where it was gonna be a problem. And it never, you know, it, once it got so low that I almost, that I had to give it a little, you know, quick burn with the torch to, to get the fire going again, just for a second. Um, but that didn't cause a problem, did it? We're in good shape here. Um, Offset smokers are freaking amazing. Cooking with real wood, the flavor that you get, you just cannot beat. But you can't, you know, fire it up in the morning and then go to work and come home at the end of the day and and you've got, you know, your, your smoked meats. You just can't do that. You're going to have to be around to manage it. You're going to have to be around to feed in a log of wood, a stick of wood every now and then. Um, so running an offset smoker might not be for everybody, but... Um, if you love really good smoked meat and, um, and you can work, work this in, maybe you, maybe you have an offset, maybe you have a pellet too. Um, you know, obviously I have a few rigs around here and I'm not done buying stuff too. Cause, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of fun tools out there, but all I'm saying is that they're not that hard to run. You just have to get comfortable with it, not stress over things, practice, and you get really familiar, pay attention to it, to how it reacts. Pay attention to the different woods you're burning. Pay attention to the conditions, the wind, and all that stuff. And um, you know, don't stress. Just uh, just learn with each cook, and with each cook, you'll get better. And you can make some amazing barbecue like this. So, anyways, I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you'd like me to, I I'm really impressed with the performance of this GoPro, going for the entire six hours without, or, or about six and a half hours total, I think, without shutting down. It was pretty good. Um, maybe my fan idea helped because I heard these things overheat. It's a GoPro Hero Nine. Um, so thank you, GoPro. Uh, besides that, um, if you want to see me do this again on maybe something even longer, like a brisket, I'd be willing to give that a shot. Um, that's a long cook. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you having questions, comments, put them in the comments section. Um, yeah, reach out to, if you like this video, please hit that like button, share, subscribe, all that stuff that helps my channel. Um, I really want to grow this. And, um, so I do my best to listen to your comments and listen to your questions. And, um, and I will try to make better and better videos for you. Um, notice there's not a lot of BS going on here. I don't do fancy intros and all that stuff. I just want to get right into it, providing good content for you. So thank you very much. Smoke on my friends.